Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Royal Chess. My name is Jan Marcos and I have prepared a, a very interesting topic for you for today. This is my sixth video on the strategical gems of Anatoly Karpo and today we will speak about pawn um, chains and pawn avalanches and the, the our, our game we will focus on is the game between Anatoly Karpo and Juja Polgar. Of course, Juliet Polgar is more famous in the in the uh, world of chess, but uh, her sister Juja was also a very very strong player, uh, female player of the strength of a strong human G uh, strong um, male GM. So uh, there is a lot uh, to learn from her as well. And this game was played in 1987 in Bilbao. And let's have a look at at the game. Uh, Carpo played uh, the English opening, he played c4, and um, he even, Carpo even wrote a book on c4, so he, he knows the English opening very well, and also this opening is very good for uh, for studying uh, the, the pawn chains and pawn avalanches, because uh, usually the pawns don't get exchanged very quickly, at least in some lines. And uh, also when you are looking at this position, it reminds you on um, uh, reminds you of a different opening. Of course, this is the closed Sicilian with re reversed colors and uh, with an extra tempo for white. So basically, once you know what to do in the in this type of English opening, you can also use it in different openings. For example, in the closed Sicilian. Now white went e3. And this is also already quite interesting. When you are playing uh, with a pawn chain, you usually are trying to put your pieces behind the pawns so that um, so that they don't stand in the in the way of your pawns, and you get more flexibility. Therefore, White is going uh, e two e three, and he wants to put the knight to e two instead of uh, f three uh, because. Uh, once you have the knight on e2, you can go f4 sometimes, but with the knight on f3, this is no, not possible. Also, uh, Zhuzha was uh, has put the bishop behind the pawns, but he she has already uh, committed her knight to c6, which might be a problem in some positions. Usually, when um, you have your pieces in front of the pawns, you want to open the position because you don't want to push your pawns forward. So. Um, you are happy that you have no, not weakened yourself and you want to open the position. And when you have your pieces behind the pawns, they are usually less prepared for opening the position, but in closed position they are more flexible with your pawn chain. So, so um, that's a small rule which might be handy uh, in, some, in some situations. Now black went d6, rook b1. And as you can see, Carpo is already playing on the entire board. He is uh, preparing b4, b5, and but also f4, maybe sometimes d4. Very interesting. Knight g7. Now Carpo uh, went b4, and uh, Zhuzha uh, decided to play a6. This is um, maybe disputable because usually the general strategical rule says that you don't how you don't have to move pawns uh, in um, in spaces where you are weaker and it's uh, quite clear that white is stronger on the queen side so therefore maybe black should uh, be conservative and keep his pawns uh, his pawn chain intact but on the other hand after a6 b5 this uh, this rook gets some some play so it's a double edged decision and but maybe not a bad one now Carpo went d3. Of course, he doesn't want to go d4 and open the position. Uh, he he cannot even go d4 uh, immediately, but maybe he could have played knight e2 and d4. But with b4, he shows that he really wants to keep the position closed and get some space first. Bishop e6, knight d5. And that's also the reason why Carpo plays uh, knight d5. He doesn't want black to play d6, d5. Castling knight e2, queen d7, and knight e c3. So you can see how much is the play of white connected with the d5 square. He's controlling it 
once, twice, three times, and also has put a knight there. So a lot of control there on the d5 square, and for black it's difficult to, to, to get the the knight away. But he started, but she started to work on it, and this is uh, also a very typical way how how um, white players are playing against the close Sicilian or in the close Sicilian, and how black players are playing uh, against the English opening. She played knight d8, a4, knight c8. So she simply has put both her knights behind the pawns and now she's prepared to play c7 c6 without exchanging some pieces and this this knight uh, starts to feel a bit uncomfortable of course this ma entire maneuver has cost black two tempi so again it's quite double-edged but at least it makes sense and gives her some ideas how to fight against against white's strongly protected knight on 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 d5 and now in order to, to, to make some space for the knight, white went knight e4, and uh, Zsuzsa went f6. This is quite an interesting uh, move, again, because it seems like a weakening, but uh, as the position is not open yet, uh, it really isn't a weakening, because uh, Polgar can uh, all the way at any time play f6, f5 and get in some kind of a normal position. Much more committal would be bishop takes d5, c takes d5, after which white would have two bishops and also this d8 knight feels very very uncomfortable not being able to jump to c6 or, c or e6. So knight d4, f6, castling and finally black has fulfilled her plan playing uh, c7, c6, and Carpo had to retreat. But it has cost black so much energy that it was worth for Carpo to, to, to stay with the knight on d5. And moreover, some other ideas uh, have uh, arisen. With a6 and c6, white is quite uh, pretty much uh, sure that he will be able to open the queen side if needed. Now, uh, Polgar went knight f7. <coughs> because she's preparing f5 and she doesn't want the white knight to jump to g5 queen c2 f5 knight d2 so uh, finally uh, Ruzsa Polgar was able to drive away both white knights from the center and the position is looking more normal as it had looked like several moves before and uh, Zsapolka started to play uh, on the king's side very forcefully. She went g5 and Karpo went a5, again pinning his hopes to the queen's side, and Zsapolka went h5. Of course, with the knight on c8 and so far away from the king's side, it's, it's probably not the case that black is just, uh, you know, starting some mating attack or whatever. But uh, getting some space uh, in the close uh, neighborhood of White's king is, is always a good idea. Um, now um, White uh, played a very topical move. He played f4. Uh, this is a very typical way how to stop uh, the advance of White in the uh, close Sicilian or the, of black in the English opening with f2 f4 black simply says stop I don't want to give you as as much space on the king side I don't want to you to play f4 I just want to to also have some strong stronghold of my own uh, at this moment again it's like against the normal rule the, 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 the strategical abstract rule which says that you have to be passive in the region where you are worse, but on the other hand, um, this f4, uh, f1 rook helps you quite a lot when playing f2, f4, and gives you some strategical um, reason to play it. Knight e7, and now this knight, after being so long on d5, got used to nice squares, and he is pretty. It is. Um, um, Carpo transfers it to b6, which is a very nice square, and also it can be really driven from there uh, 
anymore because this the, the there is no pawn which can just uh, kick it out. So knight on b6 is nice, and now Karpovan knight b3 and uh, Bulgar knight g6 and Karpov prophylactically queen d1 at the king on h5 and uh, he simply wants uh, Bulgar to to explain what she's intending on the king's side. For example after h3, h4 maybe queen h5 is quite interesting because now uh, it's, it's not at all easy to cover this g6 knight and the g5 pawn and so on. So maybe king d, queen d1 forces g4 which again gives some more stability to to uh, uh, to white because now it's clear that the king side will not get opened very soon and uh, white can um, start to uh, focus on on different part of the board. And now Karpov went play d4 and this is very interesting and also very typical for the English opening that. Uh, the play is being um, played uh, around the center and white is playing uh, the d4 move on move 24. Usually you play one of the moves d4 or e4 on the first move or on the second move maybe but, but not on move 24. Uh, but after d4 white really gets a lot of space in the center. Um, for example after e4 it's quite clear that Black's uh, play on the king side is is uh, kind of stuck because h4 the this the, the single h file is not uh, going to win automatically and white can focus rook f2 rook c2 b5 on the queen side so uh decided to to take on f4 white took and to try to be active in the center but d5 is perhaps a mistake um it's quite uh, logical that black didn't want to just to sit and wait because for example d5 is very unpleasant but this seems to lose some material c takes d5 bishop takes d5 knight takes d5 c takes d5 and maybe black was hoping to get some counterplay but after after taking on d5 to play some rook d8 and all all this is very weak um, and even white's king might feel a bit uncomfortable with all these diagonals opened but um, Carpo, uh, true to his style, simply plays knight c5, improves his position, and uh, goes for some positional advantage. Now, please note that rook d8 is not such a great idea because of knight d6, so it's a bit difficult for for uh, Zhuzha to to actually cover the d5 the d5 uh, pawn. For example, knight d7 is knight d6 again. And rook queen d6 or queen d8 is knight takes b7. So the only move which remains is queen c6, which is a very ugly move because the queen goes under the x-ray of the g2 bishop. And now white simply went bishop b2. And uh, Polgar played h4 because once she has played so much activity on the king side, she simply wants to make sure that it was worth it. Queen b3. Uh, this is quite unpleasant. Now the the pressure is mounting um, against the d5 pawn, and uh, Black has to has to cover everything slowly. Maybe rook d8 was was a was a possibility, but then White plays rook, rook e1. The e6 square is very weak. Well, it's it's very unpleasant basically. So uh, Bulgar decided to go for for kill instead and for some active. Counterplay, she went uh, queen e2, bishop d5, queen, uh, rook e2, bishop d5, queen d6. And this might be a, might feel a bit scary. For example, rook takes b2, rook takes b2, bishop takes d4 is, is um, uh, in the air. But uh, Karpov's pieces are well po po positioned in the center, so it is no surprise that there is a tactical solution to his problems. He simply went rook e1 and uh, allowed this combination, rook takes b2, rook takes b2, bishop takes d4, check, king f1, bishop takes b2, otherwise it makes little sense. And now black has got a piece up 
but is a piece up, but after rook e6, it's clear that the g6 knight falls. And please make sure uh, make sure to notice that uh, once you once you push your pawns in front of your king, even if it was a closed position, uh, sooner or later this, the position opens. So you will you might have problems with your king. For example, in this position, it doesn't seem that black is is going to have any problems with his king, but like 95% of all positions are just hidden open positions. Uh, they seem to be closed, but you can open them somehow, and this is also the case. Here it's it's much clearer that that the black king might be quite weak. So black went queen c7, white took on g6, king h7, and simply went rook b6. And the material is equal now, but just see how uh, how big the difference between the activity of white species and black pieces is. Black species are just scattered around the board and this b2 bishop is quite vulnerable. So black simply went bishop g7 but now she's already a pawn down and after knight e6 there is some more tactics going to happen. The f, f8 uh, rook is, uh, is attacked and uh, it can't go away because this f7 knight is also being attacked. The knight cannot go away because of the g7 bishop which is also being attacked. So uh, Zhuzha was probably in a time trouble, so she simply made several moves to get behind the move 40, but after this she of course understood that she's just going to be mated and resigned. So we had seen a very very interesting game, which, uh, uh, which might uh, be an advertisement on the English opening. Uh, really, the English opening is is a very interesting strategical opening, uh, which suits well major players, which are strong in positional decisions. And we had seen um, that, um, that, that the key uh, to, to be successful in these uh, positions is to get uh, harmony between your pieces and your pawns. So usually you put your pieces behind your pawns so that uh, your position is very flexible. Also, we had seen that um, you have to take care that uh, every position which seems to be closed might open uh, sooner or later. So also, like pushing your pawns in front of your king is not a good idea. It's, uh, it's not always a good idea. Sometimes it is, but it, uh, it uh, is dangerous as well. And thirdly, we had seen that sometimes you can stop the activity of your, of your opponent uh, by by timely f4 or even this youth polgas a7 a6 was a way how to stop b4 b5 very quickly so um, this was my uh, video on pawn chains my name is Jan Marcos and this video was created for real chess so this is uh, everything uh, for today have a nice day bye bye